Welcome back to CBS Detroit. Calling all jazz lovers. The world's largest jazz fest is getting ready to take over Detroit. Joining us to tell us all about that is Chris Collins. Thanks for coming in this morning. It's a pleasure to be with all of you. What a joy. You know, I, I, it was only until this morning I actually learned it was the largest like free jazz festival in the world. This is impressive. I mean, how many acts are coming down to this? Well, you know, we have about, uh, oh, uh, close to 50 uh, different performances throughout the festival. Hundreds of artists, hundreds of stagehand workers. It's about, uh, you know, our, our the Detroit Jazz this whole foundation which pr produces the event it's about a four and a half million dollar budget that has to be raised every year wow. to keep it jazz and keep it free it's no joke explain this setup because when you're talking about something this massive how many stages do you have and how how's the, the actual setup yeah, well, this year we have a, a, a slightly revised schedule we just put online at DetroitJazzFest.org. Okay. Everyone can get, get it digitally there and at the festival, of course. And this year we're using the Carhartt Amphitheater stage and the waterfront stage we built on Hart Plaza. Then we close Woodward. We have all kinds of food trucks and fun stuff along the way. And then a big main uh, Chase Main stage in uh, Campus Marshes and Cadillac Square. But additionally, we have an anchor desk where we do uh, artist interviews that are uh, uh, broadcast and shown throughout the festival. And with the only festival that does this, we do free live streams of all the stages across the globe. So we extend the free opportunity, removing that barrier so everyone can participate in this music, whether they're at home here in Detroit, on the footprint, or in China. In 2021, we reached uh, um, a little over 2 million viewers globally. Wow. So it's a great thing for so Detroit. Cool. Yeah, it's it's so cool. cool. Incredible yeah. numbers. What yeah. a fantastic way, too, to celebrate this genre. Uh, I'd imagine in its 44th year, there's been a lot of growth over the years. How has it changed at this point from since it started? Well, I was fortunate to know Robert McCabe. I met him at his house a few times before he passed. He was the guy who uh, came up with the idea initially. And, you know, it went from uh, having affiliations with the European Festival in Montreux, Switzerland, and then we had Stroh's and Ford and all these different places, and then it really it really crashed. Miss Gretchen Blade came around at that point, and she put together um, uh, the Gretchen Blade Down to the Arts, which funds many things, but it became uh, an annual large donor to the Jazz Festival, and she saved it. That's fantastic. Now, you're a, you're a touring jazz musician, so you have a great ear. Now, let's talk about the venues. You, you said there's the main stage at uh, Campus Martius and the amphitheater. Yes. Uh, tell us about the sound quality of these two places. Well, I tell you, all three of them, the waterfront as well, uh, which is the Absol Pure waterfront stage, the, these, uh, we work to make everything the highest level of excellence, whether it's sound, lighting, audience experience, artist experience, and artists will tell you partially because it's free. You come to the Detroit Jazz Festival, it's the most diverse, generationally, culturally. You have neophytes, you have jazz lovers, and it produces, a testament to diversity, by the way, it produces one of the greatest jazz listening audiences, and the top artists will tell you that they record albums at the Detroit Jazz Festival because the audience is so good. And that's a testament to what happens when you break down the barriers and invite everybody to the party. Yeah, and the party is always so impressive. And it's really interesting to see how it's evolved year to year. Yes. Anything new and different this year that folks can uh, expect? Well, you know, the, the, the core focus and the things that, that I focus on is always the music, the performances. I got a, rid of a lot of the fringe stuff and the, all the educational groups that are selected for talent. They all play on the professional stages with all our sound crew, the same thing that Herbie Hancock would play on right so focusing on the music we have to talk about the artists the cream riggins our artist in residence detroit native who's equally known in the straight ahead jazz field as well as the hip-hop genre and he's bringing an amazing list of folks that are going to in a very sophisticated way bring those two musics together which makes a lot of sense in detroit and then we have legacy players like like uh, lewis hayes in fact lewis is one of our three nea jazz masters three of the four nea jazz masters this year are from Detroit, and they're all performing at the festival. Regina Carter, uh, Louis Hayes, and Kenny Garrett. No city has ever had that happen before. And that's not, we're, we're not Detroit-centric this year at the festival because we're in Detroit. We're Detroit-centric because Detroit is all over the globe right now, man, when it comes to music and entertainment, just like it was in the past. It's still happening today. It's a very special place. That is awesome. All right, give us the information once again. It starts yeah. on the 1st? starts September 1st uh, with an opening night party at 5 p.m. You can still buy uh, VIP tickets for that, um, but the festival itself is completely free. And uh, then we have two shows, starting with a tribute to Gretchen Belate, our artist in residence, and then Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we go from about about 11 a.m. till 10.30 p.m. at night, continuous, and you can watch the streams uh, for free at DetroitJazzFest.org. Get the schedule, see the whole lineup, get to know the artists, and uh, all that good stuff.